You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here with Andy Robison, the vocalist and synth- synthesizerist from the band ILO. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like that synthesizerist? I kind of made that up. <laughs> it's, it's a new one. I'm going to put that on my Instagram, actually. I like that. I like the sound of it. Thanks for taking time to talk to me, and welcome to the pit. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. When I get a chance to talk to just one person, I kind of like to dig into their origin story. Where did you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Aberdeen, Scotland, which is currently where I'm still living. Um it's a nice place. It's very gray. Wouldn't recommend coming to visit. <laughs> and so what sort of things were like influenced you that, as you grew up that led you to find your passions in life, such as music? Hmm, good question. Um, so when I was younger, um, my mom was involved in some uh, street drumming bands where I think it was like a, an activist kind of group where they would uh, do this sort of like Brazilian inspired street drumming. They would like get a big crowd together and they would do, uh, you know, like people would have like one individual drum like strapped to their waist and stuff. And they'd be playing these uh, really like tribal kind of stuff just outside like shopping centers and stuff. Uh, I got involved in that when I was maybe seven or eight years old or something and sort of apparently discovered that I had like a really rhythmic sort of vibe going on just kind of naturally. Um, so from there I ended up doing just, you know, playing in the drum kit, uh, like drummer for a couple of bands, did that for a couple of years and sort of slowly expanded towards other instruments just because I kind of got bored of just being the drummer, you know? (laughs) So yeah, you, uh, ended up studying drums in college. That's true. Yeah. But Um, in that process, that's where you kind of found your love for vocals. Yeah. Um, Before I studied in college, when I was trying to sort of uh, dip my toes in like other sort of musical stuff, um, I used to just record covers of music in my bedroom. So I had like, uh, you know, like the old rock band USB mics that you would use to sing in rock band. Uh, I had one of those and it turns out it works really well as like a kind of homemade DIY uh, recording interface. So I used to just record like covers. I think the first cover I ever did was uh, Aerials by System of a Down. So I did a cover of that by myself. I just did like the drums, the bass, and the guitar, and the vocals. And uh, it wasn't that bad. And then I started doing more and more of that. And then, yeah, when I got to college, um, turns out I got kind of bored of drums (laughs) and studying drums by themselves. It kind of seemed like uh, every group performance I ended up doing everything except for drums. So that was fun. And, and uh, probably uh, unusual because I remember, you know, in uh, music college here, it was like there was two drummers and a million guitarists and like oh, three yeah. bassists, right? Yeah, so yeah. everybody was always bugging you to do something for them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. I mean, like um, for most of our performances, uh, we usually had enough people that, you could kind of just do whatever, but I, I sort of actively went out of my way to not play drums in the big group performances. I kind of tried to keep that as like uh, the solo instrument study, and then use the other performance areas to keep messing around with other things, you know. And so uh, you were posting things online, making stuff yourself, and then eventually Phil heard a song that you made called "Main Menu for Life." Life, right? Life needs a main menu. Yeah. (laughs) Ah. Yeah. Oh, that's a classic. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I used to uh, post a lot of um, like video game music type sounds, you know, Um, I'd be like, oh, this sounds like it could be in a video game. And I'd post it on my SoundCloud and post it to my Facebook page that I had at the time. And yeah, after like a couple of years of that, um, I think Phil messaged me and he wanted to like sort of just share some things that he'd done because he said he was like a fan of like a couple of the sounds that I'd made. And, uh, I think the very first thing he sent me was, uh, the demo for Parhelion from Union. So that was quite interesting actually. Wow. That's like one of my favorite songs. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Uh, so you, you guys got together, but the first real thing you put out was reanimate. Yes. Yeah. Um, it was it was quite interesting with that. So 
when we started working together, um, the biggest issue that I'd had with with uh, bands in the past was you kind of get into this thing where you all get together and you jam and play music and stuff. And then you you sort of try to hype things up before they're even done. You're like, oh, music coming soon and stuff. And, you know, you're playing some gigs and stuff, but not having any uh, studio material or anything. We had the benefit of not living right next to each other and not being forced to uh, play live, which you kind of sometimes are if you're in like a local band sort of. Um, so we just sort of kept all the cards close to our chest and then we we hashed out a couple of like weird demos which got scrapped and then eventually Reanimate came out when the rest of the album was like 90% finished. It shows a lot of de- determination. I know a lot of people wouldn't even bother trying because, oh, we can't get together and jam. You know, we need to have a group photo and everything like that before they even have a recording. You mm-hmm. guys went the totally opposite direction with it and maybe... Maybe that's why the music is so, so good. Uh, I, uh, before we move into that, I also wanted to talk about one of your other passions because I creeped you on Instagram mm-hmm. and you're quite a photographer. Oh, thank you. No, thank honestly, you. I, when I go, uh, there's lots of people, you know, everybody has cameras on their phones and stuff and everyone's posting stuff on Instagram. But like, honestly, when you go through and see your shots, like that could be in a magazine. Is that wow. something that you've always had in the going on? No, so thank you very much. Uh, that means a lot, like genuinely, because uh, I've only been doing photography for like the last year. Um, oh. It's something I've always wanted to get into. Like, well, mostly the filmmaking side of things, um, which I oh. haven't posted publicly as much. Um, but, you know, photography is like a byproduct of that, you know, like trying to get familiar with uh, your gear and stuff. Um, but I only bought my first proper camera like just just over a year ago i think it was august last year i just kind of bit the bullet and i was like okay i'm just gonna become poor and buy a camera so that's kind of what i've been doing this year during the whole thing that we don't speak about during this year (laughs) right uh so that's that's really cool when you when you're going around taking pictures and stuff do you sometimes get lyrical ideas no no i i don't really think about (laughs) lyrics until the very second that i'm writing them honestly that might be the right approach maybe maybe. (laughs) on uh, the song reanimate you guys seem to kind of feel like you found the sound and that was kind of like where you went for because you had some uh, demos of other songs before that but that's where you kind of felt like this is elo or ilo right yeah yeah definitely definitely um like we had a i think it's like an over over 50 minute long track which was basically just like a rip off of a haken song um (laughs) and it was okay it was fine but you know that that was kind of our opportunity to like figure out what the sound was and kind of go through some stuff and not necessarily rely on that music and then i think we did that we had maybe the first two minutes of union like the title track and then yeah reanimate was sort of probably realized okay this is pretty good this is good vibe it's got the chunkiness it's got the melodic stuff and it's got the weird bleepy bloopy synthesizer-y stuff as well so it was basically the mixture you were looking for yeah yeah um because the, the big thing of it is uh we're not very good at our instruments so we had to have <laughs> other elements that would sort of hold the music up um the first big 15 minute long track that we did was a bit too ambitious and like epic and sort of like uh cliche progressive So when we got reanimate, we're like, okay, this is sort of like more comfortable to what we can do. And, you know, we're not having to like stretch stretch ourselves too thin to sort of achieve something that we can't do, you know. Well, you're being very humble. You guys are all very good musicians. But it's interesting you say uh, things are coming out to you as being cliche. And because that's... I. I know exactly what you're talking about. I hate it. I I, I, go, I listen to so many different bands all the time, and I'm like, that's so cliche, you guys. Like, don't do that. How, how do you avoid cliche? Is it a gut feeling? <laughs> well, <laughs> apparently we don't, <laughs> according to some people. <laughs> um, you know, we, we get told that we're doing, like, cliche stuff a lot, but I think it's just um, uh, maybe just, like, an intuition and, like, being, like, self-aware of what a cliche is i guess because there is stuff you know that has passed through like the filter and we're like okay that's a bit cliche or a bit 
you know, you would expect to hear that, but it sounds good. You know, I think it's like just sort of knowing when something sounds good and has other elements to sort of lift it up and make it a little less cliche and more uh, part of the sound that you're trying to build, which is hopefully unique. And it's probably also a part of the process that you guys had for this album. Like it was sending files back and forth a lot in the email and stuff like that, I imagine, since you were, you know, not together in the same town. So do you think that was also something that helped you focusing more on the music, like, you know, listening to it a million times and deciding if you actually got it completely right? Instead of getting lost and thinking about, you know, we need to get a poster and we need to get a group photo and we need to hype everybody on Instagram. You guys are just focused on writing the songs first. Yeah, yeah, you've like you've nailed it completely, one hundred percent. There, um, <laughs> that's that's entirely the method we went for. Um, you know, because I maybe it's different. Well, it is different for other people who are more uh, jam based or improvisational based. You know, people who are like really, really um, just masterful at their instruments, and you know, you can tell them to play something, and they'll just do it. You know, I've got friends that can just do crazy crazy things without even thinking about it you know but um yeah i don't know if it's maybe like i know it's maybe being humble or something but my my own technical ability is not too great so um it's a lot easier for me to sort of sit down and just be really slow and methodical and yeah like repeat things over and over until i can think "Uh, okay is this good is this interesting you know and having the space as well between us and the ability to just sort of sit in our own time and engage with the ideas in our own time and everything that helps a lot more because sometimes when you're in a room together you can sort of compromise just for the sake of you know maybe you're paying 15 pounds an hour for a rehearsal space and you kind of just need to figure it out there and then you know you don't have the opportunity to sort it so yeah it 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 works really well for us and some other people that i know as well I think it also worked well because you you did a lot of the sound design on this album with the synthesizers and listening to the songs over and over and over again, you figured out how to put layers and layers of synth on here, but without doing too much. It, it must be hard to kind of like balance that because you can do so many things with synthesizers, but it's easy to go too far. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I definitely can't take all the credit for the sound design. You know, Phil does a lot of that as well. Um, just in general with like the production he just knows how to fit things together my side of the sound design is more like um, okay there's a gap here it needs something I can just sort of figure out what that something might be Um, so yeah the sound design is sort of a back and forth between me and Phil there Um, basically it's just there to fill in gaps like I, I always jokingly say that like the music is basically just like pop metal you know, because it's like basically taking the uh, the ideas of like pop music where it's like, you know, you go from like a verse to a chorus to a second verse and there's always something new being introduced, you know. Yeah. So I just kind of try to follow that because, yeah, the same with like hearing it over and over and over again. I want to get to a point where even if I'm hearing it for the hundredth time, I'm still excited by what's there. And all this weird sound design kind of helps me to achieve that. And we'll also make this album last years and years and not age as we seem to be able to do in this genre for some reason. I hope so. (laughs) Uh, So it must have been kind of bizarre, uh, you yourself being having a background on drums and Phil also has a background on drums. And then you guys brought in Clark. So was it kind of the strange, like a lot of pressure on Clark kind of a thing? Or was it like, let's just see kind of what his voice is on the instrument and just kind of pitch in our ideas? Um, <laughs> so I think because me and Phil were both drummers, we could be, you know, we could look at Clark and say, okay, yeah, that is really, really good drumming. But um, uh. with Clark, Clark was never actually originally intended to sort of contribute to the the writing process of Union because um, obviously it was all being programmed from the start and that was the intention basically. There was no point where we said, oh, maybe we could do live drums. Um, we, we got in touch with Clark because we thought one day we're going to play this live and we need someone who's really good. And 
I, I vaguely know of Clark. I've seen him a couple of times on Facebook and at some gigs down in Edinburgh and such. So it's it's kind of early days. This was like back in 2017, I think. It's like it's kind of early days, but I'll message him, ask him if he wants to be involved. And it just sort of, he ended up doing some, well, he ended up doing all of the, the drum patterns from there, humanizing them and making them his own and everything. It was awesome. And also a part, huge part of the process, right? Like just changing one symbol, the slight sound can totally change the whole dynamics of everything. So it would have been just a whole nother layer for oh, you guys yeah, to definitely. figure out. Right? Definitely. Yeah. There, was, there was a lot of times where you had to rein them in. Um, I remember the first proper thing that he did was uh, reanimate. He did a couple of uh, drafts for that with different programming. And uh, I think it was maybe the second draft that he'd sent. And the the whole first verse was just so, it was so intense. It was so much more intense than it needed to be. It had all of these fills and like China symbols and stuff. And we're like, okay, it's it's good. You need to just tone it down a little bit. <laughs> so just for the next album, you guys will just let them do endless blast beats. Basically, yeah. That is basically <laughs> the entire idea for uh, the next one, which we kind of showed off a little bit in the new song. Uh, speaking of which, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit because you guys did an online uh, concert not too long ago. And yeah. how did that go? And what was that like? Do, do you think that's going to be something you'll do more of or kind of like, eh, you know, we'll just kind of focus on making most new stuff? Or what do you, how did it go? How did it feel? So, the very end of it, having it all done was amazing. Doing it <laughs> was <laughs> awful, absolutely awful. Um, oh. It was, we, we had about 30 days maximum to do everything. And um, which maybe, you know, for some people doesn't sound too bad, but because it had to reach a particular standard, there was just so so much work involved with it that it was it was really rough um but it paid off you know i i think it went really well i'm really happy with the the quality that we did manage to achieve um for me as myself as well like as a you know as like the other side of things doing the filmmaking i filmed and uh, produced the entire video which was super stressful but it's like the first time i've done something like that and i'm really happy with how that came out um, in terms of the audio, that was the first time that Phil had mixed a sound like that, you know, with um, with proper live drums and everything. The first time that we'd done anything with live drums, uh, there was so, 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 so much work involved in such a small, condensed space of time that it was super stressful. But like, it definitely, definitely paid off. And, you know, we're still still feeling good about that. You should. It, it, uh, it was a great, great concert. I want to dig into your lyrics a little bit, if we can. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> okay. Okay. Where do you feel, like, if you had to describe Union, uh, just from a, the lyrical kind of standpoint, what would you say? Uh, hmm. It's, it's, it's a bit difficult to speak about. It's basically just uh, a whole ton of depression, really. Um, Mm -hmm. a, a lot of like sad sadness uh mixed feelings about you know relationships and how i interact with other people and stuff um it originally wasn't supposed to be like such a personal thing but i ended up projecting a lot of what was going on at the time onto it um and just all kind of happened to come together in this idea of like uniting people and yeah i don't know I, I feel like it even you know like a year and a half it's still kind of too fresh to sort of talk about so i don't know get to that in like 10 years maybe <laughs> great well give me a call and we'll talk about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we'll get to 10 years and i'll be like oh it wasn't that big a deal it was fine it was fine <laughs> It was actually all about mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I think that, you know, the way it comes across to me when I listen to it is just what you're singing about just seems to go and fit with the vibe of the music, honestly. So, like, was it kind of a thing where you waited sort of the songs to be done to start thinking of the lyrics for them? Um, let me think. I think pretty much everything was done. 
Um, because, well, usually a song isn't done until it's had the vocals put onto it. Um, yeah. And there's there's some sections that really need to be sort of uh, felt out with vocals so we can know where we're going for the next bit. Um, there was a couple of places like uh, Parhelion and Coalescence where the vocals were basically like last minute in terms of a couple of lines and stuff. Um, yeah, lost my train of thought there. <laughs> That's all right. Long day, I, long day. This I want to talk about your music video, if I can, the one for Reanimate, because this is kind of yes. where I first saw the whole idea behind this guy who seems to be in a cryogenic chamber on an empty, mm -hmm. abandoned planet. Uh, did the artwork show up first or the concept show up first or how did this come out? Yeah, so originally there was this concept based on what I had done with Reanimate and that big 15-minute track that it all comes back to. There was like this concept of like, um, what was it? It was like a dude like who had like a lost love. She was like in a cryo chamber or something, sci-fi, epic like that. Um, and the idea that I had was basically like, I can see sort of like a desolate, kind of planet a lot of like foliage and all this stuff and uh this sort of cryogenic chamber that's like smashed or something maybe it's like a post-apocalyptic kind of thing um and then we we spent a lot of time looking for artists and then i found uh we found the artwork from uh adam priester yeah who's a super cool dude and amazing amazing artwork um, it pitched him like the sort of rough idea because you know I'm not an artist I don't know really what it should look like I just have like a vague idea and I was like can you make it look like this but put this stuff in it basically and then he smashed it at which point um, after I think writing Starseeker which was kind of part of the concept we're like oh, it doesn't really have a concept anymore it's sort of all of my weird emotional life things are sort of bleeding into it now um but yeah, the original idea was meant to be sort of somebody stuck in this desolate place and this protagonist trying to like free them or like rescue them or something like that. I don't entirely remember, honestly. I, it makes sense to me because uh, like uh, when I do listen to the music, you kind of get that feeling of like being way up on a mountain all by yourself or something, being completely alone and yeah, that sort of longing for connection or something like that makes sense in my mind for the idea of union. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it's kind of lucky that it sort of did all come together in a way. You know, even though the concept kind of got scrapped, the themes and the general ideas behind it were still very, very similar, even though it was sort of uh, painted in a different way, you know. Well, it sometimes can be constricting to just try to make everything fit into this little concept, right? When really, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's art. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, because uh, I know with everything you guys have done up to now, it's been a lot of sending files online, demos back and forth to each other. And that's kind of been the songwriting process. But going forward into the horizon, do you see yourselves trying to switch that up a little bit and just kind of approach songwriting a little bit differently? Um. Well, Clark is always very keen to come and jam, um, try to like feel things out. And, you know, Phil's kind of mentioned the idea of doing more stuff like that as well. But um, obviously due to distance, it's kind of rough. Yes. But I, I kind of just prefer just sort of doing little bits and sort of piecing them together. I, I think it's not a good idea to just keep doing the same thing over and over. So there will be parts that you know, will probably be birthed out of some sort of jam at some point, but it's never never really like a, a focus or a priority when we're together. I think the only thing we've really done, um, me and Phil, is when he came up to prepare some stuff for the gigs that we did in March, he came up in February or something, and we, we really had to finish writing Replica because it wasn't done yet. We had to finish writing it for these gigs that were coming up, and we basically just sat in the kitchen for a couple of hours with some guitars, and we're like, okay, let's let's figure out how this goes and that's kind of like the closest that we've been to sort of uh writing in a more active way like that i guess hmm it totally feels different eh yeah yeah it was it was really weird because like there's a 
totally different dynamic that you need, you know. Um, it needs to be more sort of on the spot and reactive rather than, you know, Phil could send me a, a clip of a demo he's got and then I can sit down and listen to it 15 times and then write out a massive thing, which I maybe wouldn't have been able to do if I was right in front of him, you know, because it just, you sort of, uh, you gather your thoughts in a different way, I guess. Definitely. And uh, on the song Union, you guys brought in Connor Mackey to do a guitar solo on that. Is that something you guys are always kind of open to is like bringing in other voices just to see what you can capture and then, you know, always open to having guests? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, for the upcoming stuff, like I've got a ton of ideas of uh, people in mind that I would love to have involved and hopefully they will be. Um, it just it just has to be the right space, you know? the right space and it needs to fit the vibe like union is not really much of like a, a shred album there's not really a lot of uh solos or instrumental sections or anything but that particular spot just really really needed to have a solo or something just something really epic and fit the vibe so we you know we're not afraid to get somebody else as long as it's okay and so what do you see on the horizon now for Isla? Is there anything that you can tell us about right now or nothing that you want to tease just yet? Um, I, th- I think the safest thing that I can say is coming back to what you asked about the online concerts, which I totally skipped over. Uh, yes, we'll probably do something similar. We'll do another uh, video release of some sort or a live stream. There are, there are things in the works but obviously due to uh lockdown restrictions it's kind of tough getting things together but we we have a couple of ideas for um a a video performance or a live performance or something that's that's probably the the closest thing and the most exciting thing in the future what advice would you give to anyone who's trying to achieve their dreams Hmm. good question um that's deep man that's deep (laughs) um i don't know man like just uh if you want to achieve your dreams you just kind of have to figure out a plan for what you're going to do you know you have to be passionate about it It has to be something that you're truly truly interested in otherwise you're kind of just going to burn out um don't don't do stuff just because somebody else wants you to do it you know do it for you um otherwise it's just going to mean nothing it's going to be it's going to feel hollow and not good probably and you know just don't don't fixate too much on you know life just be <laughs> chill bro <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you unwind how do i unwind um you know what i mostly just kind of I spend way too much time on YouTube. Um, I like to watch video essays and stuff. I like to watch like a, a four or five hour long video on somebody talking about why Dark Souls may or may not be the best game ever made. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to say to our listeners? Um, I hope that everybody listening is safe and healthy and well and managing to get through all this. Um, if you are listening because of the old ILO specifically thanks uh thanks for everybody's support you know um it's kind of rare that i get the opportunity to sort of express that but you know it's truly appreciated considering we're just just a bunch of guys you know sitting in our bedrooms making some music and you know some of the some of the things that people say to us and the kind ways that they express how much they love the music is just like it's it's overwhelming, like super overwhelming and, you know, truly, truly grateful for it because it's just nothing that we ever anticipated three years ago when we were writing this stuff. You know, we, we still have like a long way to go if we were to be like, you know, some of the, some of the positions that a lot of our idols are, but even where we are just now, it's just amazing. It's so grateful for every experience from this last three years that we've had due to the band. This is what happens when you make incredible music. You you make us fall in love with it, and we all want to hear more. <laughs> uh, well, no pressure, I guess. <laughs> <laughs>
thanks so much for taking time to talk to me. I hope you have a good rest of your evening and hopefully we'll get a chance to talk again. Yeah. Thanks for having me on here. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can do it again and uh, talk about the next stuff. Who knows? Who knows? Exciting. <laughs> All right. Take care. Have a good one.